All right. <clears throat> All right, now here we go. We're getting into the emails here. I, and somebody tore me a fucking new one. Coming up, some lady just thinks I'm the fucking worst person that ever lived, evidently. All right. Uh, dial, dying while living out worst fears. <laughs> hey, Billy Redsack. I love that one. That's like right to the fucking point. Hey, Billy Redsack. Uh, I'm a few weeks behind, but you've asked for examples of people dying in the midst of of living out their worst fears. Did I ask for that? I have one of the worst with a link to the news story too. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There was a nurse who was prepping a patient for an MRI. The patient was very claustrophobic, so asked for a sedative to help her relax. Yeah, those MRIs, man. You know. I've had a couple of those. I just, I always just say I can breathe and there's nothing on my chest, so it doesn't bother me. But I don't, I don't suffer like from claustrophobia. Like, you know, you got to do like my older brother used to sit on my chest and I can't breathe and you start freaking out. I hate that shit. So I can't imagine people that are claustrophobic going into those things. So anyway, the doctor ordered Versed, which is like a Valium. The nurse couldn't find Versed in the medication dispenser, probably because that is a brand name. So she got Vecaronium instead. Vecaronium is a medication used in surgery to paralyze all the muscles of the body so the patient doesn't thrash around while being operated on. It also paralyzes your muscles of breathing, which is why in surgery you have to have a breathing tube put in. Oh, my God. I asked you to send this in. This is fucking horrific. It only paralyzes your muscles. It doesn't sedate or knock you out. So it is never given alone, as it would be a terrible feeling to not be able to move, speak, or breathe on your own, but to be able to feel everything happening. Well, that's what happened to the woman in the MRI. Oh, my God, she couldn't call for help. She was already claustrophobic, and then when she slid into the narrow tube, she was given the drug to help her relax. She became fully paralyzed and couldn't call out or squeeze the panic ball they give you to signal for help. So she died of suffocation in a small enclosed place, helpless and fully conscious until the end. Well, oh my God, well, how quick does the medicine come on? I mean, if she couldn't call out for help in the very beginning, maybe it came on quickly. And if I've ever seen those UFC, I remember one time watching Steve O get choked out, like he was out immediately. I hope for this person. I'm not claustrophobic, but in terms of living through your worst fears and having the worst happen, I think that one takes the cake. Jesus Christ. Here's a story about it. Tennessean.com. Jesus Christ. There's one for Tennessee. Get your MRI in Kentucky. Or go south down to Georgia. Uh, lady listener. Oh, this is the lady that just fucking rips me a new one. Rips me a new one. Uh, and what I love about it is she already like, she's so emotional and so mad that right above, she goes, lady listener dash fucking above your pay grade. You know, so her ego's in check. Dear Bilbo T. Baggins. Uh, wait, is this the one? No, no, no. This isn't the one. Is this the lady? There was a couple that ripped me this week. No, no, I think this is the lady. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this the one? Uh, wait a minute. Where the fuck is this email? It didn't come in. I'm going to have to edit this part out because I'm just sitting here babbling. Wondering where the fuck it, this thing is. No, there was some woman giving me shit about saying stuff about the fucking pink stuff in the NFL. Where the hell is that one? This other woman's just giving me shit saying I'm unfuckable. <laughs> like I didn't already know that. It's like, you know, I go out in the world with this face. I, you know, I went up to bat. 
with this hand that I was dealt. Um, where's fears? Oh, pink shit comic. Okay, yeah, oh, here it is. Okay, okay, okay. Pink shit comic comment. Dear Billy Clueless, I was incredibly surprised by your ignorant comments about breast cancer awareness events in the NFL during the commercial read of your MMP. Um, well, then you're obviously not a regular listener. I always was talking about how they wore that pink stuff and then that whole that wasn't I'll wait to the end I'll wait to the end about talking about this shit first your sexist comment about it being the month of the lady oh that wasn't a cute thing month of the lady (laughs) okay I'm sexist I mean I am according to other women so I guess you're another woman say that completely degrades women in general how If I say the month of June is gay pride month, does that degrade gay people? Oh, I guess because I said the lady. What was I supposed to say? The warriors? Okay, don't say you were just kidding. You weren't. I can say whatever I want. (laughs) What the fuck? Why are you talking to me like you're my parent? Now, don't say you you were just kidding. You weren't. This This is what it's like to do stand up now how they took it is how you meant it and you you tell them i didn't mean it that way you're lying all right evidently you know what my thoughts are okay this was evident by your next dumbass comment wait a minute my next dumbass my whole podcast is one dumbass comment after another why are you fucking dying on this hill? You could have chose all of these other you could have got outside yourself and had empathy for somebody else that didn't suffer from something. But no, 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 not you. But wait, you're a better person. All right. This was evident by your next dumbass comment. I kind of like this. I like Because half the times I forget what I said. Saying, what's up with all the pig shit? Well, I'm a comedian. I mean, that's how we get into subjects. What's the deal with pig shit? Now you have no idea what that moment is about. Oh, I can explain that to you. Yeah, that whole cancer awareness and holding that thing up. I I, Believe it or not, people are aware that there is cancer. And people are aware that people have died of it. Do you know how many fucking friends and family I have lost to cancer? Do you have any fucking idea? All right? If you were at a party, I wouldn't fucking bring a sign and hold the guy's fucking name up in front of you and ruin your fucking party. You know, I, this is the thing. I watch sports to escape that. I do benefits all the fucking time for this shit. I meet the people. I see them in the beds fucking withering away. I saw my buddy like that. Yeah, like I'm watching a football game. Everything on Facebook, all of this shit is all gloom and doom. All the news is gloom and doom. The weather channel is gloom and doom. I have one oasis to watch a bunch of people have a ball and try to get it across the fucking goal line and people have to bring up gloom and doom again. That's what I mean. Like, why are you doing that? Why are they doing that? Anyway, and if you knew anything about the NFL, which I don't think you, uh, not that you don't know about this sport, like they have had a sort of a, like a checkered past when it comes comes to these types of things where it looks like they're doing these things And they're actually making a fuckload of money off of it. Which I believe the first time they did the pink thing, um, from what I read, allegedly, remember those pink jerseys you'd buy? And you think, wait, my, you know, my aunt or uncle died of cancer. I'm going to buy this pink jersey. And this is, you know, so nobody else has to go through it. Evidently, like half of 1% of the money for the jersey went to cancer and the rest of it went to the NFL. That's what I read. It's kind of like when they did the support the troops thing and they would cut to a troop sitting in the crowd. And you thought, oh, look at them. They're patriotic. And then you found out that they, when whoever they were showing, be it a Marine or, an, or a, a Navy guy or whatever, they charged that branch of the service for a commercial. So, all right, but whatever. But, I, you know, let's get back to her ripping me a new one. It's about educating women about a disease that kills far more women than COVID-19. 
a virus you relentlessly talk about. Well, wait a minute. Now I'm offended. Okay? Are you saying that all of those people... I mean, how many people need to die before I don't talk? You're doing the same thing to me. So not enough people talk died of COVID. So you find me talking about it relentless. <laughs> All right, I'll try to ease it up. Uh, early detection is vital to surviving enter cancer. Really? Oh, there's some new information. Everybody knows that. I got yet another colonoscopy. I got fucking Jacques Cousteau going up my ass here in another fucking month. But but that you know, I almost forgot that that was that there was gonna camera was gonna go up my ass. I I almost forgot, but thank God that guy had a, okay. I all right. I, I get it. I get it now. I, I see your point. Um, as a person who has seen breast cancer completely destroy families, well, who hasn't? It could have been prevented with early detection. I applaud the NFL for trying to make a difference. Okay, now they're right there. Your heart is in the right place. Okay? You ever go out on a date, ma'am, and you date a guy, you go on a date with a guy, and you just think he's a dreamboat. And then after your date, you're talking him up to your friend. And your friend just has this look on her face or his face. And you're like, what? What's going on? Yeah, you know, you might not want to have a second date with that guy. That guy, you know, he's a little shady. <laughs> I'm, sure he, I'm sure he was nice. I'm sure he was polite. I'm sure he held the door. That's what the NFL is. You just have to know that, Okay. Um, I'll leave it at that. And you can enjoy yourself thinking that their heart is in the right place. Their heart is at the bank always. Um, if you, if having quote the pink shit on the field helps educate and encourage women viewers on their sig or their significant others to discuss early detection and save lives, then yeah, it's worth your clueless ass being annoyed by it. All right. <laughs> okay, I mean, look, I've been watching the NFL and I've seen what they've been doing for the better part of a half a century. And, uh, you know, okay. I mean, these are the same people who also knew that the players were getting brain damage and they, they suppressed the fucking information. And now they've settled out of court for these, like, pathetic sums and now they're fucking with people's money and I'm reading this thing that they grade on a racial curve as far as the, they're just using all these fucking flim flam ways to try to get out of paying it but I'm sure they're I'm sure their heart's in the right place here and I am a clueless idiot and I'm sexist and I'm a fucking moron and uh, I shouldn't con relentlessly talk about COVID because not enough people have died of that and it hasn't led to yet another great small business down the road going out of business. That's great. Yeah, so I'll shut up about that. Um, anyways, think of it this way. If the, if the pink shit caused you and the lovely Nia to have a conversation that leads to her being more aware of the disease and how to prevent it, you should be thankful for the pink shit. Now, first of all, like this is really condescending. How fucking dumb do you think I am? That I just sit there and I go, uh, I don't know, breast cancer exists. And then some pink fucking sweatband goes by. Oh, wait a minute. I need to have a talk with my wife. Anyway, she goes, I know this. Your children will be thankful that it may have saved your mom's life. <laughs> Jesus, how hard is this person trying to sell their point, bringing my, my family right into it? My wife gets checkups, okay? I get checked for the ass cancer. I have people look at my heart. I do all of this shit because I've lost like three friends to heart attacks. I've lost countless people to cancer, all right? Okay, and it's really sad. And I miss all of those people. And it would be nice to watch a football game and not be reminded of it. It feels like more it should be on the news. Or a billboard. Sports are supposed to be an escape. I feel. That's just my own opinion. And I'm entitled to it. 
And I can have that, okay, without you coming at me and calling me sexist. Um, anyway, and you're also really late to the party because I did a bit about this on a talk show one time and it fucking killed as far as I remember. So anyway, all right, well, you know, maybe someday I can fucking be as enlightened as you are and set aside this pandemic. <laughs> okay. Lady listener, fucking above your pay grade. Oh, fucking above your pay grade. All right. So now I, I read this in a different contest. This woman is talking about banging somebody, I guess, better than you are. Um, dear Bilbo T. Baggins, I'm a lady listener. Now, why would you say you're a lady listener? That is sexist and offensive to women. And I'd like to share a female, female perspective to help balance out your podcast. Oh, Jesus. Well, yeah, I've been asking you guys to write in. You know, I mean, granted, I don't say anything that makes you want to write in other than tell me to go fuck myself like that pink lady did. By the way, this is my favorite podcast, so thanks for your work on it. No problem. Anyways, I often hear men complaining how hard it is to make, to make women like you. I think you missed something here. Yeah, you kind of missed something. I often hear men complaining how hard it is to make women like you, what, bang them? Uh, Because the next sentence is that you need to trick us into fucking you. I can understand that it's hard to woo a woman. Uh, No, you can't. Unless you're a lesbian. Unless you've actually had to hit on a woman to have sex. You have no fucking idea. I had this conversation with my wife one time. She was telling me one time, she goes, you know, guys just say the dumbest shit, you know, to you at a bar and blah, blah, blah. I said, all right, let's flip the tables. Let's say I was controlling I was in control of my desires, and you had to come over and wow me. Hit me with an opening line. She had nothing, and I was being a cunt to her. And she goes, you're just making this difficult, more difficult than it needs to. And I said, welcome to my world. Anyway, who is more attractive? Okay, I can understand that it's hard to woo a woman who is more attractive than you. Uh, But if you try to fuck someone as ugly as you are, I'm pretty sure they'll say, okay. Um, No, that's not how it works. However, a few men want to date a woman who is at their level physically, and I respect that preference. But let's flip the script and see if that argument still holds water. Well, I mean, first of all, you're talking about something you don't know anything about, which is hitting on women. And actually, hitting on women who are better looking than you is not a hard thing. It's a confidence thing. All right? And then the the PED way of getting a better looking woman is to make a bunch of fucking money. But that doesn't count. I'm talking you're sleeping on a futon. You're going in there. You're like Damone. You don't care if she comes, stays, lays, or prays. You got the fucking attitude, right? That shit. Yeah, I know some legends. Legends. Who are probably, I mean, at best, sixes. That are absolute, they've been crushing it for decades. Because they're confident. And they know, and they, they just worked on it. They worked on it the way you work on a fucking jump shot, and they are fucking amazing at it. So I think a lot of men, they don't want to put the work in, and they can't get past. It's like people doing stand-up. The reason a lot of people want to do it, but they never do it because they're so worried about bombing and the pain of that. You have to push through that until you're, you're bulletproof. You don't care. You don't care who gives a fuck. You just move on to the next show. Um That's what I would say. But what do I know? I'm just a sexist guy. So she goes, let's flip the script, which is fair, because that's what I did with my wife when I made her hit on me. Oh, she bombed. Oh, she bombed. She's like, hey, how's it going? And I just looked at her like, ugh. (laughs) Anyway, but let's flip the script and see if that argument still holds water. I'm a woman. Uh, Do you think there's any way in hell I can convince a guy who was an already 100% physically attracted me to want to fuck me? Um, I have no idea. I'm not a woman, let alone date me. I have no idea. It's way harder for women to impress a man with anything other than her looks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's why you guys walk in with half your fucking hoo-ha hanging out so you can get some drinks. Um, <laughs> I assume that wasn't a joke. You meant that. I assume your next point is probably that I'm. I assume that your next point is that I'm probably ugly. Why would I say that? 
So that's why I'm saying this. I wouldn't say that. That's just listen. I'm a dick. I'm not fucking mean. At least I don't think I am. I'm not the most beautiful girl in the world, but I do get some attention. I'm cute enough to get by. You sound like a keeper to me. You know, you're not the most beautiful girl. So you know what that means? You probably got a great personality. And then, you know, not everybody's coming up to you. So when somebody does, you appreciate them. I mean, that's, you know, you date some hottie. Jesus Christ, they're walking around like, you know. I remember going on dates a few times, right? A few times when I actually got a beautiful woman to go on a date with me before I met my wife. Not saying my wife isn't beautiful, all right? But by then, I was in my 30s, and I just didn't give a fuck. So that's when I started, you know, doing all right. But in my 20s, a couple of times, I went out on dates with this one beautiful woman in particular. And the entire time I was in the restaurant, she was just looking around to see who was looking at her. And I I put it all on me going, I'm not holding her attention and blah, 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 blah. And then years later, I was just like, she couldn't help it. You know, we were like 21 or something like that. All of a sudden, the whole world's paying attention to her. That must feel amazing. (laughs) What's she going to do? Look across the table at me? Um, So anyway, she goes, so I'll put it to you and your lovely loudmouth wisdom. Is there anything a woman can do to fuck or date outside of her lane. I've seen men do it frequently. Yeah, we do. We usually do it one of two ways. You're either funny or you you have a level of success. I've seen women do it less often, but how? I'd love to get your perspective and also that of the lovely Nia. I got to have Nia out here. It's just hard. You know, she has to watch the kids when I come out here. Uh, It would be even cooler if she agrees with me on some of these points. Well, I'm not going to debate any of your points other than like hitting on women. But that other stuff, I don't know what it's like to be a woman. Um, Thanks and go fuck fuck yourself, pussy perspective detective. Well, why don't some other women write in about this? I would think, um, universally speaking, the hardest thing, is finding somebody that deserves your love. You know what I mean? Because I could give you an easy example of something that will make a guy hang around is if you cook for him. Because no women do that. Because just even suggesting that is considered sexist when the reality is cooking for somebody is one of the nicest, sweetest, loving things you can do for them. Now, if they don't appreciate it, and they're like, where the fuck's my fucking club sandwich yeah then you you start feeling like that but like uh i love cooking for my wife i love cooking for my family and because it's the way that i show that i care about them so i would think things like that or uh I don't know, if you're into the same type of shit, if you're into sports, if you're into something where there's an overlap or something like that, or if you like funny or something like that. I'm just going by me, you know? My wife was fucking hilarious. Um, and she was just into this, all of this stuff, you know? She's the one who got me into Steely Dan. I'm fucking in Harlem an African-American woman, and she, she's playing me a Steely Dan album. I was just like, who is this? How many layers is going on? She just was really interesting. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, so you want to date a better-looking guy? Yeah, why would you want to date some fucking slob or some bald bastard like me? I would say, yeah. Uh, I also think like if you if you do activities, which is hard during this pandemic, you know, what I mean, I always found like it was way easier if everybody's supposed to be there, that everybody kind of had their guard down and you could kind of feel the vibe of who somebody was. Whereas you go into a bar and everybody's kind of got their guard up, right? The guys are on the prowl. The lady's like, oh, Jesus, look at this fucking creep over in the corner with the chest hair, right? Those places are not good to meet people. But um, I got to be honest with you, like. I can only give you advice from the male perspective. So I imagine there's a bunch of women rolling their eyes. But I can tell you that, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll get Nia to come on here at some point, like how to do that. Um, Because I I don't know. I'm not going to fucking be a hypocrite here and act like I know. 
what the fuck you need. I don't know. I don't know what you can do. There's got to be a book on it, right? That's what I don't understand about incels. There's books on how to get women. Like, why would you hang out with a bunch of other people who aren't getting pussy? <laughs> it's like, I don't know how to fix a car. Neither do I. Hey, let's sit around and talk about it. Because the car will never run. All right. Sugar in the house debate. Hey. Hey there, Billy uh, Birthday Cake Ticks. I know. I still got them. I'm a huge fan. I just saw you at one of your sold out shows at the Fox Theater in St. Louis. You fucking nailed it. And it was a dream come true. Now down to business. Nice. Thank you for coming out to the show. You know, I did that movie. I stayed right across the street at that hotel. Uh, Recently, I cut out all added sugars. I noticed I had a serious addiction and decided I really needed a change. I got a baby girl uh, the same age as your son. I want to make sure I'm around for her. As much as possible. Yeah, nothing like kids to get you to fucking straighten up. To my problem in perspective, I drank three tall cans of Arizona Arnold Palmer's every day. Anytime my girlfriend had sweets in the house, I always ate it all. Sometimes even before she got a chance to have some. I had a hard time with self-control. Oh, yeah, dude, I've been there. I've been there. I have a 600-pound person inside of me. I just... My wife brought home these chocolate fucking uh, croissants. And there was two of them sitting under the, the little cake thing, you know? One of those glass things, stands you put a cake on. And I saw them. And not only did I think of eating one, I thought of taking both of them and putting ice cream in the middle of it and making a fucking sandwich. <laughs> I just don't do it. Anyway, person goes on to say, I made it a rule to keep out all sugar from the house as well so I wouldn't give in to any temptation. Within two months of simply cutting sugar out of my diet, I dropped 20 pounds. Wow, no exercise or anything. I was really fucking proud of myself. After a while, a little while, my lady started bringing candies back into the house. Yeah, you're a couple of junkies. Somebody's going to go score some heroin, then you're going to be back on the fucking junk. I asked her several times not to or at least hide them in a spot where I'm never in at the uh never at in the house or where i can't get to them at all she kind of bit my head off saying well you should have better self-control oh there you go well that's nice um while that is true i think putting sugar back in the house is the equivalent of stocking up the fridge with a recovering alcoholic's favorite beer months into the process um This is what you should have done. When she said, well, you should have had better self-control, you shouldn't have said anything back, and you should have just walked out of the room. I'm just going for a walk. And then come back, and then just be chill and wait for her to bring it up again. And then just be like, all right, can we talk about this now like adults? All right. Like, I want to be around for my daughter. Why are you getting mad about that? You got to come from that place. But if the discussion starts with, well, you should have better self-control. You wrote like five exclamation points after. Like it's not, you're not going to work it out. I'm big on going for walks. It's another way to drop weight. (laughs) Just go for a walk. You just walk out of the room. That's what I, I try to do now. Anyway, the guy said, I've said that same thing to her several times, but she gets mad and makes a big deal out of it. Going as far as saying, fine, I guess... I just can't have anything I enjoy in the house anymore. Yeah, she's fiending. No matter how careful or nice I'll ask her, she'll always make it all about her. I've told her a ton of times that she should respect my addiction, but she always gets pissed off and turns it into a huge argument for some reason. Well, probably because you dropped the weight and she doesn't have your willpower yet. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're in a couple situation and they're... They're cool with the fucking dad bod or the the fucking, you know, little extra pounds you have as a woman. They can get, like, insecure if you start losing weight and looking good. They they get, you know, shit is changing. It makes them feel like you're going to get rid of them. Like, all kinds of shit happens, dude. Like, dropping 20 pounds, like, fucks with the balance of your relationship. It's really weird. Um, Anyways, he says, this shit really pisses me off, and I can tell mentally I'm starting to break. Yeah, because... 
she's able to go off on you, and you have to sit there and act like you're trying to figure out which wire to cut so the bomb doesn't go off. Um, so you, can you settle the debate for us? Should she respect that I have an addiction and keep the sugar hidden? Should she respect that I have an addiction and keep the sugar hidden? Or do I just need to suck it up and have better self-control? Uh, P.S. The East St. Louis woke bits were the funniest jokes I've heard in my entire life. Much love to you and your family. Um, oh, he was in St. Louis, not Atlanta. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you this, sir. If your wife had a sugar addiction and she told you not to put any sugar in the house and then you brought it in after a couple of months and then she said she was willing to let you have it in there if you hit it, would you do that for her? If the answer is yes, then I don't think what you're doing is out of line. Um, I also think you need to have better self-control also. Like, I have booze in the house. I don't drink anymore. <clears throat> I got to tell you, after a while, I don't even see it anymore. Like, my wife told me, I asked her where something was. She goes, it's underneath the bar. And I was, and I was thinking literally like a bar, like a, like a, like a, ballet bar or something what, what bar in the kitchen what are you talking about? she goes the bar i was like oh oh yeah oh yeah because i go in there and to me it's i don't even see the booze just underneath i know there's batteries right i got kids and their fucking toys need a bunch of batteries so that's where i'm at so um it's a little bit of both but you know i don't think it's fair that she's going off on you like that and you have to sit there you know, especially when you're making a choice that's going to be better for everybody, that she should be reacting like that. I don't think that's a very mature thing for her to do. And, uh, yeah, she needs to be more mature about that. And that's just something that, you know, I don't know. She'll either accept that if she's an adult or she won't, or maybe she will in a few weeks. But, like, that, that my big question is if you're asking for something that you would willingly do, without a fight for the other person and it's something you really need and it's going to not only make your life better but everybody else's i don't think that's too big of an ask uh but i considering she has such an emotional response to it i think i would ask her what what is going on because there's something else going on beyond that you know women are so funny how they always do that i guess i can't have anything i like ever again <laughs> Yes, that's it. Christmas is canceled. All right. Prostitute or normal woman? Oh, Jesus. Hey, Bill, I don't season my chicken enough burr. Oh, Nia would love that. I'm going to be straightforward and ask for your advice. Do you think I should continue seeing this one particular prostitute or should I just start fucking a regular girl? Is this a joke? I feel like fucking the prostitute because I don't have to worry about her getting pregnant and the head is amazing. Look at the look at the drop off on intellect when the second a guy writes it. <laughs> Although I'm scared of catching a disease, I'm in my early twenties, and lots of women consider me attractive. The issue is I don't like dealing with people in general. It takes a lot for me to actually go out of my way to speak to people. I find even I find it even harder to find a woman I want to fuck just because I find most of them to be just plain boring and you find the prostitute to be exciting. All right. Well, I think you, you maybe have some issues you might need to talk to somebody about. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you hang out with the prostitute. There's going to be a lot more drama. Um, keep in mind, I don't want a relationship right now. I just want to clap cheeks. Unfortunately, even that comes with drama. Although if I really like a girl, I wouldn't mind a relationship. Dude, you are not ready for a relationship <laughs> in any shape or form. Should I continue to fuck the prostitute or should I stop being a bitch and be patient with these other women? Thanks for the advice and I wish my hair looked as good as yours when I get older. All right, he's obviously breaking my balls. Um, I don't think you should do either. I don't think you should continue banging this prostitute. I don't think that you should uh, be in a relationship. I think you should maybe go to therapy and figure out why uh, you don't like being around people, why you find um, going, 
going to a prostitute better than, you know, why you find people boring and shit like that. Uh, I'd say, you know, I don't know. I don't want to superimpose my bullshit on you, but like, I don't know. It seems like maybe a little depression, maybe a little abuse growing up. I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm not a doctor. So I would, um, the best thing about your email is that you're not in a relationship with anybody. Um, so what I would do is I would maybe go into therapy and try to figure out why you've ended up in this place. All right. Talk it out, figure it out, figure yourself out. When you feel like you're fucking ready, go and be ready, but don't like get into a relationship just because that's what everybody else is doing at your age, because you're just going to break somebody's heart you know, and God knows, you know, I would also get tested to see if you didn't, you fucking didn't catch anything. I would do all of that, you know? Yeah. All right. That's it. Okay. Jesus. I'm fucking deep emails this week. All right. That's it, everybody. That is the podcast. Um, go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday.